Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to touch on a question that I've been asked a few times, an interesting one, and that is, do I need therapy or coaching? Well, I've had experience on both, both as a therapist and a coach, and also as a client. I had a mentor or business coach in my 30s and he'd help me plan, look at my strengths and weaknesses, what are my short and long-term goals, make recommendations regarding my work, my personal life, and general lifestyle. So at that point of my life, that's what I needed and it was great. However, saying that's what I needed is partly true because I needed more, I was just not aware of it. So when I reached my early 40s, I realized that I needed different type of support. I realized my childhood challenges and traumas were having an impact on my well-being and where my life was going. So reflecting on that, however good my coach was in my 30s, and he was good, he didn't realize, or even if he did, wouldn't be able to help me navigate through the additional support I needed. What I came to realize in my early 40s is I've been always held back by my past, by myself. There was shame I was not aware of, low self-esteem, even though I was very confident on the outside, and heartbreak because I'd buried it all so deep inside. There was anger, there was trauma, and this trauma or traumatic time that I had growing up made me very street streetwise because I was, I suppose, on alert. And whilst being streetwise really does help, and it helped me a lot. I found it hard to socialize and trust people and connect, which ultimately meant I was lonely. So even though I was very successful and had all the material things that I was ever dreaming of when I was a teenager, there were still things missing in my life. And that may sound familiar with some of the entrepreneurs out there, where you reach your goals and you have everything you've set out to have. And when you reach those milestones, those celebrations are short-lived and you just feel there's something missing. So my therapy sessions and counseling literally changed my life. It opened my mind to help me discover what was going on for me, to get a better understanding of that, to bring awareness and those difficult feelings and the past, it had to come to the surface to be dealt with. I had a great therapist by my side to help me process that in that journey. And that journey had a much bigger impact on me and that help through therapy rather than coaching. And it also started the journey for me to enter the mental health arena and to help others with their struggles and challenges because I know where I was and my thoughts were they won't help, they can't understand, they don't get it, all of those things but it really did have a positive impact on my life. Coaching is a future orientated process where people speak about where they want to go with in their lives, what they want to achieve and their goals. The coach helps them navigate through that route to their destination. And therapy is generally around relieving distress, healing emotional wounds and complex issues that may be underlying. There is help with changing unhelpful behaviors and patterns of thoughts. You create new stories, new narratives around what they may be feeling and thinking that will help them with their present day challenges. I suppose what most coaches and therapists have in common is that we believe that you have the tools, the know-how to help yourself. And this goes back to Carl Rogers' his theory of self-actualization through empowering an individual and seeing that transformation within them. Coaching can provide significant changes for people, positive changes, but for some clients, those changes will be, should we say, 
they won't last as long because they're not built on the foundations, the psychological foundations that therapy can provide. And that doesn't mean coaching doesn't help, it does. And as I always say, we're all different. But what I found with clients and even in my own experience, if we don't maybe get to the root of something, then it often comes back to bite us in some form in later life, whether it's through relationships, work, general day-to-day -day living. It can become a block where we procrastinate or where we're not sure why we're feeling a certain way. And this gives us the feeling of sometimes being stuck in life. And this is where I see therapy having real benefits. And whether that therapy is one-to-one -one or in group sessions, it has the power to unlock these deeper rooted issues that may be going on. And with deeper psychodynamic exploration, this brings the awareness to you, the discovery about yourself, which then can form that foundation, that understanding, that rebalancing and to empower you on your journey. Some coaches may argue that such therapy just relies on the deficits and the wounds and that instead a client needs to look forward and build on the energy looking forward rather than the deficiencies of the past. And this is what solution focused coaches, I suppose, uh, look at and work on. And there's no right or wrong here. And it's about what works for you and what you need at that time and what stage you are in your life and your journey. When I trained as a therapist, there's a lot of emphasis on our self-awareness, our own self-awareness. And there is a lot of personal development involved in the journey to become a therapist. Coaches don't tend to go through this type of training when they are studying to be a coach. And for me, this is massive. This is a massive area because it's only through this self-exploration that you truly begin to understand yourself. And you may think, well, what, what's the need for that? Well, there's so much that's going on when we are sitting with a client. It brings to the surface things where we are on autopilot, like your beliefs, the environment around us, judgment, different people that we meet and how we go about things in terms of what's going on internally for us. And this is so important because when you're sitting with a client, that client can come to you with different beliefs, cultural beliefs and different walks of life different classes and you need to sit there and listen without judgment. That is vitally important. And I touched on listening there, another really important factor because a client may have wrote something on their assessment form before coming into a session and that could have been written a week ago, a month ago. And when they're sitting there, they could bring something completely different to the table. And at that point, there is a real skill, a real art of having that personal therapeutic relationship and understanding and creating that safety for that client and also not judging, validating, being empathetic and this isn't a mechanical process. It's one where it's built. It's built through trust in the therapeutic relationship. If you've not been on this type of training and you are a coach, it could impact your ability to help that client in what they need. Because there could be a lot going on for you internally at that point that is affecting the process in some way. 
and whether that's you know the tools that you give the advice that you give or just sitting there it could be your body language and that's where some coaches may feel out of their depth and let's turn it on its head once again if you're a therapist and you want to coach or go into coaching or combine both then that's where you need to have that flexibility and be able to associate and be more personal in that relationship and have experiential awareness as well as theoretical to be able to nurture the client's qualities and to help them reach their goals and aspirations. So we come to the word balance, which is one of our mantras here at the Great Cotswolds. As with most things in life, it's about balance. Coaches used to be told not to work with clients that are highly stressed, but times have changed. There are a lot of people stressed out at the moment and stress comes up very often. And coaches are mostly able to manage clients who are feeling stressed because you can't shut it down, you can't ignore it, you can't divert it, it's part of life. So there is a place for therapy and coaching or a combination of both. And as long as it's helping, and there's a lot of people out there that need support, uh, it's, it's a good thing. And, you know, we can come on to cultures as well, and that's another big conversation. It could be seen as more acceptable to go for coaching rather than see a therapist due to the stigmas attached to that. I know when I was growing up uh, as a Greek Cypriot, if I said I was seeing a therapist, it would be looked upon in a completely different way than if I said I was having some coaching, for instance. And this is still the case in not just my culture, but other cultures. So there is a place and there are further conversations to be had. And as long as it's helping and supporting, people find their way, their journey is improved, then it can help and it will help. So there you have it. You decide coaching, therapy, bit of both, what suits you? You can contact me for a session and I would do the first session for half price to see if we can work with each other, you can contact me via the Grey Cotswolds website. And I look forward to hearing from you. But for now, this is Andreas Patikis, your fellow Travel on Life's Journey, signing out.